JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 1st. I am Haralampos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session on Thursday. It gained versus Aussie, CHF and Kiwi in that order, while it underperformed against uh, GBP, CAT, the Euro and the Japanese Yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, NOC and SEC. Although the performance in the FX sphere does not paint a clear picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, the weakening of the risk linked to Aussie and Kiwi suggests that uh, markets may have traded in a risk-off fashion. Indeed, most uh, major EU indices closed in negative territory, but appetite improved during the US session, with Nasdaq gaining the most and the S&P 500 hitting a fresh record high. Dow Jones failed uh, to gain and ended its uh, trading 0.26% uh, lower. The optimism rolled over into the Asian session today. It seems that the catalyst behind the improvement in uh, investors' morale may have been uh, an outline of US President Biden's infrastructure proposal released by the White House and detailing a $2.3 trillion worth of investments. Biden presented uh, his plan in a speech uh, later in the day. That said, the plan uh, also included tax increases on corporate income from 21% back to 28%, but investors seem to have been focused on the intentions to boost uh, the economy. What's more, reports said that the size of the plan could further increase to $4 trillion as additional parts are announced. The proposal comes uh, less than a month after Congress passed a $1.9 trillion uh, package of, um, of, of COVID uh, relief spending and it remains to be seen whether it will, the new proposal will also get through. Although this is good news for the economy and it seems to be a supportive development for equities, it would be interesting to wait and see whether this will revive fears of an overheating economy. If so, this could lift US Treasury yields higher and perhaps weigh again on equities. However, we don't believe that we will see a strong sell-off, if any. We stick to our guns that the stock market is likely to continue trending north and any potential setback may offer new buying opportunities. We repeat for the upteenth time that with the Fed noting that, infl that inflation will meet their goal in the years after 2023 and clearly signaling, the, uh, signaling that there are no discussions about normalizing monetary policy, investors may feel confident to continue increasing their risk exposures. As for today, we have a meeting between OPEC and its major non-OPEC uh, and the major non-OPEC members known as the OPEC Plus Group where they will decide on output production. Growing concerns about global demand due to a resurgence of COVID infections has uh, been weighing on oil prices recently and thus we see the case for OPEC and its allies to roll over their current supply curbs into May. This and further improvement in the market sentiment uh, in the foreseeable future may bring an end to the corrective phase in uh, oil prices. Now, as for the rest of, uh, of uh, today's events, we have the final uh, market manufacturing uh, PMIs uh, for March from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, which are expected to confirm their preliminary prints as well as the USS ISM manufacturing PMI for the month, which is anticipated to have increased to 61.3 from 60.8, underscoring the fast recovery of the world's, uh, of the world's uh, largest economy. 
US initial, U.S. initial jobless claims for last week are also coming out and the forecast points to a small decline to 680,000 from 684,000. As for the speakers, we have two on today's agenda and those are Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker and Dallas Fed President Robert Kabla. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.